Now, this story you're about to hear, I feel like we should have a drum roll or something. Because the states are supposed to share power with the federal government 50-50. That's the federalist view. The anti-federalists wanted even more states' power. That's why senators were popularly elected only since 1917. Well, 1913, they passed it, but the first time it started happening was 1917 with the 17th Amendment. And if you expand out on that, we now have a federal imperial government itself run by foreign special interest. And the UN, UNESCO, others claim most of the federal lands in this country as collateral on the national debt. Look that up. Just like third world countries have to give their public lands over to the IMF and World Bank. That's why Rockefeller created the national parks. Now, national parks are great, but they're only a few percentage points of the overall federal lands where they're closing roads, harassing uh, people on four-wheelers, kicking campers out, and saying, we don't want humans here, period. That's part of training you that that land isn't yours so they can give it to the Chinese government like they've given hundreds of thousands of acres uh, in uh, places like uh, Nevada, that's 89% federal. Places like Utah are over 65% federal. Roughly half the country is under federal control, ladies and gentlemen. And now the feds are in states like Texas trying to claim all the land on both sides of the Colorado or the Red River. We're talking about trillions here over time. Bill Clinton used these rules to shut down the only clean burning coal in this hemisphere. In Utah. Then overnight, it doubled the stock that he was invested in in China, the only other clean burning coal in the world, after they put the regulations in on us to use the coal. So that's what's going on here. That's what's unfolding. And that's why this is such a big deal. Utah transfer of public lands. From the encyclopedia, the state of Utah passed legislation in 012, the Utah Transfer of Public Lands Act, to require the federal government to grant the majority of federal land of the state back to the state of Utah for 2014. Well, 2015 is here. The state has pointed out that federal government controls more than 50% of the land west of Kansas. In Utah's case, 64.5%. I think it's more than that if you count some of the other stuff. A situation that has increasingly resulted in tensions across the Rocky Mountain West. They've got 89% of states like Nevada, and that's not enough. So joining us is Ken Ivory, Utah House Representatives and President of the American Lands Council. He's a uh, District 47, was elected to the Utah House of Representatives in November of 2010. And he has developed and secured passage of legislation that these efforts include the Transfer of Public Lands Act and the passage of bills backed by the Utah Association of CPAs to begin reducing state dependence on federal funds they call Financial Ready Utah. He's the president of the American Lands Council. Ken uh, dedicates his time to educating legislators and community leaders throughout the states about the jurisdictional rights and duties to manage, protect, and care for the lands within our borders. Now, again, I'm not going to go any further, but he's the author of Where, Where's the Line? How States Protect the Constitution. This is the kind of guy we need in Congress, the type of person we need in the Senate, the type of person we need as the federal uh, you know, land commissioner, the, the type of person we, we need over the different federal bureaus, not a bunch of globalists with special interests that want to be robber barons. The robber barons funded in the last hundred years taking over of state governments so people out west didn't know the land was theirs. And, and they'll say, oh, they're going to build factories, make it all ugly. No, they're not. No, it's like 98% empty out there. The globalists are the ones coming in that take the land and turn it over to selective groups. They don't want us having access to it. This guy's a hero. He got it passed. Now it's starting to be implemented. And if they can do this and block the out-of-control feds, who aren't even feds, the federal argument's over because it's been taken over by UNESCO. It's under UN Treaty, Agenda 21, on record, that, that, that we can't develop this country. It's a fraud. It's an economic embargo, just like shutting off our power plants. And if he can get this deployed to other states, this could cause an economic boom, the likes of which we've never seen. This is so exciting. Uh, I mean, they're even trying to stop ski resorts being put in out west now, saying it's bad for the earth. It's a load of bull. Humans tend to make the environment better when they actually live in the area.
So joining us, I know I'm ranting, is the state rep. I know that's a big intro, but I wanted to fill the listeners in on why this is such a big deal. Here's the headline, Utah demands Fed surrender lands by December 31st. That's New American Magazine that came and passed. So exciting, sir. Give us a presentation on what's happening. Well, thanks, Alex. It, it is a big time. It's a wonderful time to be alive, as Ronald Reagan said. I was just down in Austin last week doing a training for uh, new legislators in Texas. This is an issue that transcends the West because beyond Colorado, states in the East are spending billions of dollars a year to pay the federal government to manage the forest in a way that burns six million acres a year, kills millions of animals, destroys that resource, pollutes the air, destroys the watershed for generations. You all east of Colorado and across the nation spending billions of dollars a year to lock up what the Government Accountability Office said is more recoverable oil in Utah, Colorado, Wyoming than the rest of the world combined. Now, another important thing, we were invited to come and give a presentation to the Reagan Library a couple months ago on national security. Our national security cannot operate. Our electronics technology, renewable energy technology cannot operate without rare earth minerals. And right now, 95% of the rare earth minerals for those industries to function come from China. The price is going exponential and we've got rare earth minerals locked up all over the Western lands under federal control. Now, here's the, here's the critical thing, Alex. Here's how simple this is. You get right back to the fundamental principles, right? Governments exist to secure these rights, life, liberty, property, and self-government. That's why a government exists. Well, without the right and control of property, we don't have liberty. And so here's, here's, here's the situation. You've got the federal government controls more than 50% of the land east, uh, west of Kansas, but the statehood promises called enabling acts, the statehood promises are the same. In many cases, they're word for word the same. In some cases, Montana and North Dakota, for example, it's the same document. And yet on one hand, the federal government transfers the land and on the other, they don't. Now, uh, promises are the same. What most people don't realize is that uh, at one point, Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, and of course, Alex, you know that great western state way over there of Florida? They were as much as 90% federally controlled for decades. And they were sending resolutions to Congress saying, hey, we can't, we can't educate our kids. We can't grow our economy. Our people are leaving our state because you're controlling all our land. They banded together. They compelled Congress to transfer their land, honor their statehood agreement, and we're simply doing the same thing today. We expect Congress to honor the very same statehood terms that they kept with all states east of Colorado, because it is the only solution big enough to get to better access, better health, better productivity. And so what people can do, they go to that American Lands Council website, AmericanLandsCouncil.org. Number one, you can sign the petition and get in the game. Log in at the website, get in the game. We're leading the nation. In, in, in restoring the rights of property, liberty, and self-governance, which restores our balance, as you were talking about. The other thing you do is, is simply tell someone. Tell somebody else about this, show them that map, get them in the game, and critically, tell your leaders. Don't assume they know, don't assume they understand. Tell them and tell them persistently. And, and as Thomas Hart Benton, he was the Democratic Senator from Missouri, who rallied all those Western states in the 1850s, he said, you got to get your members of Congress to fix their eyes steadily upon the period of the speedy distinction of the federal title to all the lands within their boundaries. And they did it, Alex. Illinois is not 96% federally controlled. Missouri is not 90% federally controlled. Louisiana is not 90% federally controlled. And they have the exact same statehood terms that these Western states do today. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, that's where we're at. Happy to, to go wherever you'd like and answering questions. This is a big subject. There's a lot of information on that website, AmericanLandsCouncil.org. You can get to, the, to the, uh, the Facebook page as well. We push information out every day. But this is the single solution big enough to restore balance in our nation and get us back to, to liberty, property, self-governance, where we have better access, better health, better productivity on our lands. Absolutely. Ken Ivory. He is the uh, president and head and founder of AmericanLandsCouncil.org. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason products cost so much, the reason um, that our economy is stalling is we're not being given access to the rare earth minerals, to coal, you name it. But China is. They're in Australia. They're in Africa. They're in Latin America. They're exploring. And American companies aren't doing it because the regulations 
and the feds are trying to get more land out west. I mean, take the Bundy Ranch situation. There were 34 families. Now there's one. We can't even produce beef in America because of regulations. More and more farmers are giving up because special interests for my research want prohibitive costs there that they're able to. Uh, to be exempt from so that they don't have any competition. And if we're able to free up, what are some of the numbers? I know they're on the Land Council website. I mean, am I exaggerating to say that if we start freeing up even 10, 20, 30 percent of Western land and some of the federal land in the East, that this would just uh, make the 10 percent growth rates that we had until the 1920s uh, look small? Yeah, I'll give you an example. You can see this map right here over my shoulder. The Institute for Energy Research early last year said there's more than $150 trillion in mineral value locked up in the federally controlled lands. At the same time, under failed federal policies that tie the hands of these good workers on the ground that would like to care for the land, we're burning 6 million acres of forest, Alex, 6 million acres a year. That's polluting the air, it's destroying the watershed, it's killing millions of animals. Instead of sequestering that carbon, into homes and viable products where that wood then stores that carbon for an indefinite period. But the federal policies that are supposedly environmental policies, destroying the air, destroying the water, destroying the, the, the animals, destroying the habitat for generations. No, we've, we've got all the tools. We've got all the tools. We simply have to get back to the very simple constitutional remedy of liberty, right, and control of property and self-governance. Let me tell you a story, Alec, what's, Alex, what's happening right now. Canada, our neighbor to the north, over the last decade, Canada has been transferring land, water, and resources to the provinces. And then just last year, they completed the transfer of land, water, and resources to the Northwest Territories. And here's what they said they discovered. They said, we discovered that when we let people closest to the, to the matter, closest to the land, water, and resources make the decisions, we learned that you get a better decision. That's not rocket science. That's not rocket science. Yeah, that's not rocket science. And so in the land of liberty, we're going the other way. We've got a federal government that's centralizing control over more and more aspects of every aspect of our daily life. And so, Alex, what we've really got to do is in the states, we've got to help our federal governing partner focus very specifically Focus on doing those things that only it can do and do exceptionally well, you know, like world peace and a sound monetary system. Focus on doing only those things that only it can do well and leave local zoning and planning and, and the, the, the tending of the garden to those people that know the soil, know the climate, know the culture, know the geography, know the geology, and are right there to deal with the circumstances whose lives and livelihoods depend upon that land, like Canada discovered. Now, obviously, the media set things up where discrimination is only white against black or black against white or north against south. That's how they want us thinking. But is it the ultimate discrimination, the fact that special interest and socialist in D.C. and others don't want the West and the states to have the same freedoms as the East has? I mean, how can you have maybe 5 10 percent of the land in the East being federal and upwards of 90% in states like Nevada, how can Congress and how can the feds say no to the law you've passed? So maybe spend some time on that, please, sir, as the state rep that helped get this passed and authored, and then walk us through the procedure now, because we know there's gonna be special interests that are gonna try to stop this. Yeah, that's a great point, Alex. What I wanna point out first is this is not a partisan effort. Republicans and Democrats sponsor voted for the bill. Republicans and Democrats on the committees and the commissions. In fact, in Nevada, bipartisan commission unanimously approved moving forward on, on the, the transition for the transfer of public lands. Critical effort because educating our kids is not a partisan issue. Burning up our animals in our watershed is not a partisan issue. Having jobs and having a roof over our head and caring for our lands is not a partisan issue. So we've got some counties all over the West that have less than 5% taxable land. How do you take care of kids and roads and public safety when you've only got 5% taxable land? So, so in terms of moving forward, um, there are states all over the West now that are, that are starting to take legislative action on this very same thing. You've got Arizona is taking action. Nevada's already taken action, working more. Uh, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, Alaska's now getting in the game on this. South Carolina, Alex, 
did a resolution supporting the transfer of public lands. And so for, for your listeners that are in states east of Colorado, if you go to the resources and then uh, what's happening in my state, and you click on the eastern states, you've got a packet where you can get your legislators to run a resolution in eastern states to support this. Now back to your point on discrimination. United States Supreme Court just a year and a half ago in a case called Shelby County versus Holder said the constitutional equality of the states is essential to the harmonious operation of the republic. They said our nation was and is a union of states equal in dignity, power, and authority. Well, think about these football games we just saw this last weekend, right? Aaron Rodgers, I mean, what an incredible guy. I mean, I know you're probably a Dallas fan. Dallas got ripped off on that call at the end. Aaron Rodgers is running off of one leg and he's still doing amazing things. But imagine if you're fielding a football team and you've got to field a couple of guys that just are not 100%. In fact, they're 30, 20%. Well, if you're the opposing team, you're going to exploit that all day long. Well, that's what's happening in our government right now. You've got part of your team where the states and the federal government are supposed to have healthy tension. They're supposed to be opposing one another to provide that healthy tension that keeps our system in balance. Well, if you've got a whole bunch of your team that are at extreme disability, where they only control 10, 15, 20, 30 percent of their land, you're going to exploit that all day long. And that's what's happening in government. Give you a perfect example. A year ago, there, there's something called PILT. All of you in the East are paying money, your tax dollars, to subsidize the West. It's called payment in lieu of taxes. It's payment in lieu of the taxes we would otherwise collect if the federal government kept the original promise to transfer the lands. So payment in lieu of taxes, federal government in 1976 said, hey, don't worry. This is going to be permanent, going to be mandatory. It's just as good as sovereignty. You can trust us. Well, over the last six years, you know, the federal government hasn't even had a budget. And so not only is the bill not permanent, mandatory, it's not even in the budget because they don't have it. A year ago, they didn't even put it in the continuing resolution. And these counties are now dependent upon this money that's only 13 cents on the dollar of the taxable value of their land in many cases. So they're dependent on this for public safety, education, roads, transportation. It makes you creatures of the federal government, and it's almost like the federal government has conquered the West by never letting it be truly sovereign. And I'm a Texan, I love Texas, but Texas advertises to businesses, hey, come here, we've got more open land, we've got lower taxes. So it's basically like we're a NFL, uh, you know, Green Bay team playing a college team when we compete against the West. I mean, you don't want Utah to go under. It's a great, beautiful state, a lot of hard work and smart people. But it's almost the analogy of Texas versus California. Look at how California is falling apart because they can't compete with Texas. Uh, now that's because of their socialist policies. And I understand you're saying it's not partisan. And I understand there's a lot of Democrats that want to have free open societies and prosperity, but it is the environmental socialist uh, anti-human control freaks that don't think humans should be anywhere out west and there's the feds uh, denying more and more access to the public lands they control isn't that driving the anger uh, out west uh, at being treated like serfs oh indeed right indeed i mean when you can't control your own land your own water your own resources when you i mean i give you give you an example okay i got a county commissioner down in sevier county commissioner gordon topham a couple months ago, we were talking to him and he says, look, my forest, a healthy forest has 40 trees to an acre. Right now, my forest has 800 trees to an acre right now. There's so many trees, they're competing for the same resource. They're dying, they're dead all throughout the forest. This is the same all around the West. He says, I'm one spark away from losing my watershed in the second most arid state in the nation and my community dies. And my federal partner is telling me that they're gonna prevent me from protecting my community to have a viable source of water, protecting the air from being polluted, my animals from being burned up, my watershed from being destroyed. That's how serious this is. And again, that's not a partisan issue. Now, yes, there are these eco-obstructionist groups that they'll go out and all day long, they'll put out press releases and say, the federal government's mismanaging the land, so we're gonna sue them and extract taxpayer dollars if we win on a technicality. And they simply don't want that gravy train to end. But the states are stepping up, because this is purely a matter of the health, safety, welfare of our communities. And the United States Supreme Court, Alex, two years ago said that jurisdiction over health, safety, welfare is possessed by the states and not the federal government. They said the independent power of the states serves as a check on the arbitrary power of the federal government. 
And then they said this, Alex, they said states are separate and independent sovereigns. Sometimes they have to act like it. That's right. And it's time to bring balance back to the situation. AmericanLandsCouncil.org. Ken Ivory, you are a hero. And I don't say that very often with a lot of our guests, but it's true. What you're doing is so important. And the fact you're traveling all over the country, that other legislatures are duplicating what you're doing. How long until we start to see the benefits of this uh, if Congress doesn't try to block you guys? Well, I, I appreciate the kind words, but, but I'm a dad. And that's why I got in this game. I've got four kids and it's a simple math problem to see what's coming. And we've got to, we've got to, we've got to act. I mean, Erskine Bowles, Clinton White House Chief of Staff will tell you. David Walker, nonpartisan government accountability office will tell you. The American Institute of CPAs will tell you. We've got a very serious math problem. The problems are real, solutions are painful. We have to act. We've got so to grow fast or we're gonna go bankrupt. I know you probably gotta go. It's a 60 second break. Can you do five more minutes and talk about that math problem? Uh, yeah, you bet. And, and again, get to the website, AmericanLandsCouncil.org, sign the petition, get in the game. When you're ready to make a difference, we are the vehicle around the nation that's making that happen. We're here to help you. You are. Get. You are. Stay there. We'll be right back with Ken Ivory, State Rep, Utah. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Several months back, I started taking your Nixon iodine and your super meal. Prior to this, I was barely walking. Now I'm able to function as a human again. InfoWarsLife.com. You've heard the callers of the show. Your products are great. I use DNA Force. I use XQ. Thank super you. Super meal vitality and lung cleanse. Every day, they're great stuff. Whether it's Survival Shield Nascent Iodine or DNA Force, Super Male Vitality, Super Female Vitality, Lung Cleanse, Fluoride Shield, Oxy Powder, I believe that all of these products will blow you away like they've done the thousands of other customers that have visited InfoWarsLife.com. That's too um, just, just amazing what it's able to do to actually detox in the body. It's great stuff. Check out InfoWarsLife.com today and the entire line of groundbreaking, cutting edge, hardcore products. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Jones, Ken Ivory, Utah House Representatives. Uh, he's in District 47, AmericanLandsCouncil.org. Every legislature, every city, every county, even though it's a state matter, should be just hammered with this information, hammered with his book. This is the real prosperity. America will mathematically collapse if we don't get some serious growth. Talk about the math problem, sir, in closing in the last five minutes. Well, yeah, you look at the math problem. Almost every state, nearly 50%, somewhere between 30 and 50% of their state budgets come from the federal government that is unsustainable. Government Accountability Office every year says it's unsustainable. It's the single largest line item of revenue of the states. So how are we gonna take care of sick people, poor people, roads, public safety, educate our kids, if we don't get ahead of the curve and get back to economic self-reliance? Um, yeah, there's a lot more we could talk about on that at another time, big issue. We're working on something called Financial Ready Utah. It's our financial earthquake preparedness planning, some modeling tools to get there. But what's really critical, we've got folks in Congress now that are stepping up. They understand this is the only solution big enough. We've got folks preparing bills. We've got our own uh, Jason Chaffetz heads the, uh, the uh, oversight committee. You're gonna start seeing some oversight on that. Congressman Bishop, the uh, interior committees, and we're gonna start seeing some hearings on some of these things. But critically, critically, rights we don't know are no better than rights we don't have. And rights we don't exercise are no better than rights we don't have. They're and dead. Property, 
Property is essential. Liberty does not exist without the right and control of property. So get on the website, sign up, sign the petition, and then tell someone. I don't care how you do it. Carrier pigeon, smoke signal. I know that if Benjamin Franklin were around today, he wouldn't be setting type one letter at a time. He'd be on Facebook and Twitter, and he'd be jamming this information out as fast as he could go. And then tell your leaders. Tell them persistently. Fix their eyes steadily, as Thomas Hart Benton said on the period of the speedy extinction of the federal title to all the lands within the states, which is what Illinois and Missouri and Arkansas and that great western state of Florida already did. Promises are the same, already been done before. It is the only solution big enough. We need to make this the number one issue in the 2016 campaign because it is the only solution big enough to get our nation back to better health, better access, better productivity. Well, look at Australia. It's beating the global curve of recession because they've got uh, rare earth minerals being extracted. And it's not even really hurting their environment in most areas. I mean, it's such a big country like us. I mean, we should be in there getting that. We should be getting clean burning coal. Is there any way to reverse what Clinton did blocking all that clean burning coal in Utah? Yeah, we're working on a lot of those things. In fact, we've got states working back together on this thing. The critical word on that, Alex, is jurisdiction. The governing right, power, and authority. Where does the jurisdiction lie for the health, safety, welfare of the people? Now, that's something we're working on in Utah. We're working on with states all over the nation. And critically also, this, this whole idea of federalism, this governing partnership, the critical word there is union. Federalism is a team sport. To be an independent check to the federal government, states have to start working together both at the executive level, at the legislative level, at the attorney general level. It's happening in some instances, but we've got to get that more coordinated. Absolutely. Yep. States have got to team up. That's what some of the corrupt elements of the feds are scared of in, in the one minute closing. You sound pretty confident, though, that the system knows we're going to go bankrupt if we don't do this. The question is, can we do it fast enough? Why are you so confident? Uh, like Ronald Reagan said, Alex, it's a wonderful time to be alive. We have no choice. We have no other option but to succeed and use the liberty, the property, the self-governance we have. And that's what's in our, day, in our DNA. It's a wonderful time to be alive. We're lucky not to live in pale and timid times, he said. We've been blessed with the opportunity to stand for something, for liberty and freedom and fairness yeah. and property. These are things we're fighting for. So get to the website, AmericanLandsCouncil.org. Get in the game. We're, we're here. We're leading on this we're here to help anyone well, ken, to ken we're out of time but i'm impressed with your work i was already aware of it but thank you for coming on i want to have you back on soon to talk about your book where's the line how states protect the constitution godspeed hey my pleasure thanks alex thank you we'll be back folks stay with us